Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at Taylor's scientific management theory, sometimes called Taylorism. So have you ever tried to boost the productivity of your team? Perhaps you've given a rousing speech or explained how important it is that your team hits its targets for the year. Now, boosting your team's motivation and thus productivity can sometimes feel like a bit of a black art. And it can be frustrating when you try and fail to boost your team's motivation. But it needn't be this way. So motivation theories, of which scientific management is one, can be helpful in that they give you research-based tools and models to use when you're trying to raise the performance of your team. Now, Taylor's motivation theory was one of the first theories of motivation or productivity in the workplace. So who is Frederick Taylor? Well, Frederick Winslow Taylor was an American mechanical engineer who lived from 1856 to 1915, and he brought an engineer's viewpoint to the world of workplace productivity and applied engineering principles to the factory floor. And in fact, he was the first management consultant and the first to look at work and productivity scientifically. And he's known as the father of scientific management and the efficiency movement. Now, Taylor believed that there were universal laws which governed efficiency and that these laws were independent of human judgment. And the goal of scientific management was to find this one best way of doing things as efficiently as possible. Now, as we said, Taylor brought a very scientific approach to productivity, and it's important to realize that he did not value the human needs of workers. So essentially, he believed that workers were only interested in higher pay and employ employers were only interested in lowering costs, boosting profits. Now, because he believed that workers were only motivated by pay, then he believed, you know, workers don't usually enjoy work. So because of that, they need to be monitored and controlled closely. So essentially, he believed that employees had a natural tendency to take it easy and just slack off whenever they could. And he referred to that as natural soldiering. Now, to help with this, he thought managers should break down each employee's job into more manageable, bite-sized tasks and then training should be given so that all employees perform these tasks in a standard way and finally workers should be paid based on how much they produce how productive they are and he called this piece rate pay now the idea of all these steps was to create a win-win situation in his eyes so he thought workers would be incentivized to work hard to earn more and that business production would be as, it, as efficient as it can be and so pr profits would be maximized. So let's take a look at the principles of scientific management. So the first principle is science, not rules of thumb. So rather than doing things how they've always been done, Taylor wanted each job to be studied scientifically in order to identify the most efficient way to do it. Now, Taylor advocated using time and motion studies as the way to do this. And that often involved looking at the most efficient workers to identify why they were being so efficient. Now, the ultimate aim was to describe the job in a repeatable way. And that way, everyone in the organization doing this job can be trained to do it in that way, the most efficient way. Now, the second principle is scientifically train employees. So don't allow employees to train themselves. Instead, each employee should be taught exactly how each task should be performed. And in fact, Taylor didn't want employees thinking for themselves. He simply wanted a simple task performed as quickly as possible. So in a nutshell, workers should be paid for doing, not for thinking. Now, the third principle is ensure 
the most efficient ways of working are being used. And there's two parts to this. So the first is to monitor worker production to ensure that they are efficient. And the second part is cooperate. And that means to work with employees to retrain and recalibrate them so that they are exactly following the most efficient way to perform their job. Now, one consequence of this was that organizational structures had to change. So rather than a factory having one single foreman, Taylor advocated several, each one specifically focused on efficiency for a particular area of the factory. Now, the aim of this step was to maximize production, unlike in situations where soldiering occurs. Um, the fourth principle is to divide work between managers and workers. Now, managers should be responsible for developing the processes, ways of working and ways of monitoring employees, and employees should be responsible for executing a task as quickly as possible. And the final pr principle is pay based on results. So that means that workers should be paid based on how much they produce. And that is done using piece rate pay. Now the use of piece rate pay forces workers to increase their production. So if they don't produce, then they don't earn. Now, one thing to note here is that most sources you'll come across will provide just four principles of scientific management. But I've included the fifth principle here, pay, as I feel it's a key component of scientific management and really necessary in order to understand Taylorism. So since Taylor's motivation theory is based on managers telling employees what to do, then it's really closely related to the autocratic style of leadership. It's also closely related to Douglas McGregor's theory X, where it's assumed that employees are fundamentally lazy and unmotivated. And I'll put links in the description of this video if you want to learn, learn more about either of those. Now, Taylor's work heavily influenced production methods at the start of the 20th century, and it formed the foundation upon which Henry Ford introduced his mass production techniques for cars. Now, whilst scientific management may sound obsolete, it's actually still in use today. Now, this is especially so, so if you need to remain competitive in labor intensive industries by keeping costs as low as possible. So for example, Amazon, now they will pay certain warehouse work workers using piece rate pay according to how productive they are. And another example is McDonald's. So if you think about McDonald's, every McDonald's across the globe looks the same and the instructions to create a burger are exactly the same in every branch across the entire globe. Now, even the process of mopping the floor is exactly the same across the globe. And this breaking down jobs into bite-sized chunks and then describing the most efficient way to do that job is an example of Taylorism in use today. Now, many criticisms have been thrown at scientific management, including, you know, although production is increased, it does create very monotonous jobs containing no autonomy. It's boring for workers and it's very hard for workers to take pride in what they do. Um, it was conceived to benefit both the worker and the company, but the reality is it generally benefits the company far more than the worker. And, you know, that's reflected in lots of the industrial action that took place in the 20th century. And finally, scientific management is often seen as dehumanizing. And that's because workers aren't encouraged to think for themselves. They simply have to follow very simple instructions as quickly as possible over and over and over again. Now, one thing to note, and I've mentioned this already, is that scientific management is just one of many motivation theories that exist. 
And although it's relevant today in certain situations, it's very much out of favour today. And that's particularly so in professional office-based environments. So in summary, you can think of a scientific management or Taylorism as being firstly a philosophy about how employees behave, and secondly, a set of principles to maximise efficiency based on this philosophy. Now, the theory is premised on the fact that employees are motivated to be productive based on one thing, money. And because of this, Taylor believed that management should exercise close control over employees to ensure they're getting their money's worth. He advocated using science to study jobs and break them down into manageable parts. And these parts could then be described in an efficient, repeatable way. Every employee could then be trained to perform the task in that exact way. Finally then, he advocated using piece rate pay to motivate employees to be productive. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.